going to read verses of scripture that for some of you this will be something you've heard at least the passages of scripture uh, within the last few days i am not reading these scriptures as a piggyback or follow-up on what was communicated uh, on Friday night, as a matter of fact, when uh, Brother Reaver began to preach and went to the passage of Scripture, I went to my iPad and showed my wife what I was supposed to be preaching. So I said, you know what? Well, I'm not going to preach that. <laughs> I'm not even going to touch it. What a masterful and awesome uh, move one first of all a masterful job awesome move of the spirit and uh, it was a very powerful and timely word for this district in terms of a transference of the leadership uh, of this district make no mistake we're not going in a different direction we're going in the same direction Moses did it one way, and Aaron, uh, I'm saying not Aaron, but Joshua uh, did it in a different fashion based on his abilities, his calling, and his gifting. And uh, you could feel the transference of authority uh, and uh, the whole district getting behind the man who is who has been called to lead us, lead us as a district uh, in this area, this geographical area, and revival, uh, church growth, and multiplication of works within our region. Uh, again, I am not trying to uh, repeat anything that was communicated. As a matter of fact, I don't plan on trying to touch that. Uh, but I believe the Lord is desiring to communicate something to people individually. I'm going to say that again. I can say it with hype, but I'm not trying to do that. I believe that the Lord is trying to communicate to some of you individually. I believe many of you have some direction in God but yet you're looking for more clarity. There are some of you God has spoken to specifically, but you're looking for uh, an analyzed, uh, computated, categorized, uh, uh, intricately detailed um, application as to what you're supposed to do. Sometimes God says to move, and then we wonder how many steps. We want to break down how many millimeters should we go. We want to determine the climate. We want to understand the terrain. We want to know every obstacle that's in the way. We want to know whether the sun is going to be shining, whether I need to bring out my umbrella. I want to know what type of shoes I should be wearing on my feet. I need to know what I should be packing. We want to know the, all the details when he simply said, just move forward or just go forward. And we won't move until God gives us the whole plan. We want from A to Z, Alpha to Omega, beginning to end. And the thing I know about God is that his will and his purpose is always uh, uh, simple. But his plan is very sophisticated. His ways is higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And you better stop fooling around while you're trying to wait to try to figure it all out. Oh, hallelujah. You see, God will give us the ending. I know you're standing. So am I. God gives us 
the ending, and, and we are we we and, and we start at the beginning, and then what we do is we want the plan along the way, and and the thing is, is God wants to fulfill His purpose. He desires His will to be accomplished, but the fact of the matter is, He will not show you the plan. Oh, hallelujah! See, we don't like that. If God showed you, hear me now, if God showed you the plan, you wouldn't walk by faith. You would walk by the plan. But we go from faith to faith. And herein is the righteousness of God revealed. You can't get the righteousness of God simply by faith. The only way you're going to be found in righteous in God is to go from faith to faith. I said some things are not revealed, amen, simply by we're standing where you are. And some things are revealed from faith to faith. Look at somebody and say, keep it moving. I want to preach to you on this subject. It's your move. Talk to somebody and tell them, it's your move. Look at somebody else and tell them, it's your move. Some of us have a cop out. We're trying to wait on God. Some of us, hey, we had this little trip. Hey, I'm, I'm waiting on the Lord. Oh, I know that sounds cute. I know that sounds spiritual. I know that seems like that's the right thing to say. I am waiting on the Lord. But can I tell somebody today, it's your move. man of God said it. He said, go forward. You heard the proclamation. You heard the command. You heard the instructions. I don't believe it was from the man. I believe it was from the God of the man. And I believe the God of the man, not the man of God, said to move forward, to go forward. And so now Antioch, the apostolic church at the North Congregation, it's time for Baltimore to move. It's your move. Now, I don't know where I'm going to go from here. I'm going to read the scripture, and we're going to find out exactly what God desires to do. Amen? Amen. And so you've been standing. You've been wonderful. You've been great. And uh, this part... You, you, you've been fitting it, you know where it says stand still? Fear not, stand still. You've been doing great with that. Exodus chapter 14, verse number 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes. And behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid. They were terrified. And the Bible says, and they begin to cry out unto the Lord. The people of God began to cry. Can I tell you, that's not just Old Testament. I'm telling you, New Testament saints, amen, when we get ourselves in a situation where God is leading us into his promises and things aren't a cupcake or a cakewalk, we begin to cry out, oh God, why did you bring me out of where I was? Let me tell you something. Where you were, that was bondage. Where you were, that was misery. Where you were, you couldn't stay. But God has called us to come out from where we were and to go into the place that he's called us to go. And it doesn't mean we're not going to have any trouble. It doesn't mean we're not going to have any difficulties. It doesn't mean that the sun will always shine. God is calling us out, verse number 11. And they said unto Moses in their crying voice, in their whine, whining campaign, because there were no graves in Egypt, has thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore have thou dealt thus with us to carry us out of Egypt? Is not this what the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians, for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we would die in the wilderness. And Moses, the man of God, said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand 
still and see the salvation of the Lord. We love that verse that gives us a reason to stand idle. Now, that's what Moses said before he talked to God. Now, he was right in a sense that they would see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today for the Egyptians whom ye have seen today. Ye shall see them again no more forever. Can I hear it? Can, can I tell you tonight? I believe there are some things that you have struggled with you're not going to see any longer. I believe there are some situations you've been dealing with. Amen. Because we're going to a different place. Amen. You won't see them any longer. Some things have held you back by chains and bondage. You won't see that any longer. And Moses went on to say, the Lord shall fight for you if you shall hold your peace. In other words, keep silent. Stop crying. Stop complaining. Stop murmuring. Stop whining. As they say in the South, stop having a hissy fit. That's not a bad thing, is it? All right, okay. Now, that's what Moses said, verse number 14. You're about to be seated. And you can say amen to that. Amen. And the Lord shall fight. You can be seated now. <laughs> you were just obeying. I get it. Verse 14. The Lord shall fight. Verse number 15. And the Lord said, now, this is what the Lord says to Moses. Wherefore criest thou unto me? man of God said it so well. And that crime was that prayer. So he was saying, okay, you prayed enough. Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. That was the message Friday night. If you didn't hear the message, if you didn't listen to the message, if you weren't there, watch it. You can, you can access, access the message, I believe it's on uh, YouTube. Uh, all the other Vimeo on our uh, on our Antioch website. You can go check it out. Please do so. Anyway, the Lord told Moses to move forward. And verse number 16 is what I want to get to and preach about. But lift up thy rod, stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the mist of the sea. Won't you clap your hands to the Lord as you're being seated. Now somebody say amen. amen. That was a long introduction. Now the Bible tells us here that Moses had absolute confidence in God. He had absolute faith in God because his faith wasn't predicated on a mere wish or desire. We know and we understand that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I tell you that we are not uh, putting our confidence on mere rhetoric. We're not putting our expectations on the fact that some man is trying to pump us up with some pie in the sky ideology or dream. Bible, the Bible clearly tells us that the former house shall be greater than the latter. The Bible lets us know that Jesus is not coming to a church that has spot blemish and wrinkle. The Bible lets us know that he's coming for a glorified church. Amen. He's not coming for a wimpy, wishy-washy, watered-down faith church. God is coming to a church, amen, that has nothing in it or nothing uh, on it, amen, that defiles uh, nothing in it and nothing on it that has anything to do with the enemy. He has nothing in it and nothing on it that would discredit the church, and it's not just something that we can do. Jesus said, I'm going to wash my church. I'm going to purify my church. I'm going to make my bride ready. Can I let
let you know, I know it may seem like the church is not in that particular place, but God can do anything. Amen. God can touch you and do everything he needs to do in your life in the twinkling of an eye. Amen. At the last trump. I believe there are some people at the very last moment, amen, they're going to get themselves right and in position to what God is doing. And, and let me tell you something. As long as you are a part of the church and as long as you have your mind made up that you want to do the will of God and you want to do the plan of God and the purpose of God, God is obligated, amen, to make sure you are right with him. As long as you keep your heart right, as long as you keep your spirit right, amen, the Bible tells us that we need to make sure that we cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit and live righteously and soberly in this present world. If you are determined, I'm going to make sure I search my heart and I'm going to make sure I uh, keep things of my flesh in check. Can I tell you when you're determined that you are going to be right with God, God is going to be right with you. You don't have to struggle with whether you're going to make it because we're in this thing by faith and we go from faith to faith and our faith is not predicated on a whim. Our faith is not predicated on a wish. Our faith is not predicated on a dream. We are going on because we have the word of God. Amen. If there's anybody that's walking by the word of God, it's the apostolic church. God showed up not because of anything anyone had done. God appeared into Moses 40 years uh, on the backside of a desert. 40 years prior to that, he was in Egypt serving as an Egyptian. He didn't. He was confused as far as who he was, and, and in a sense, uh, meaning, Amen. He was brought up in, in in Pharaoh's house, but he was raised by his mother until he was weaned, uh, and, and 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 there was some confusion in his life. Uh, his mother and his his father gave him away, put him in a basket, and sent him on his way. Uh, amen. Now I can feel and imagine he felt a little rejected. Uh, he was raised by his mom and his and his dad, or at least his mom, amen, until he became of age when he was removed from the paps. And then he went to Pharaoh's house and lived there. He was educated in the Egyptian education, amen, but he still wasn't sure of himself. He had the finest education that he could ever obtain. The Bible says in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, chapter 7, that he was a learned man, and he received the greatest education education that was available in that day. He had the books in the libraries of Alexandria. He had all the education that he could ever have. He was raised with a, with a silver spoon in his hand. But he did a certain act. He killed one of, one of the Egyptians because his brethren, the Israelites, should have known who he was. So Moses knew that he was called to be a deliverer. Moses understood that he was delivered when he was three months old and God would turn back and he was a delivered and God would send him to be a deliverer. The book of Acts said that Moses knew exactly who he was. But when he got at the burning bush and God says, okay, Moses, here I am. The scripture says that Moses said, no, not me, Lord. I can't even speak right. I can't even talk right. I, I'm, I'm slow of speech and of a slow tongue. But the Bible says, amen, he was eloquent in speech. So Moses, the man of God, had the burning bush appearing before God and God appearing unto him. And now he's seeing God and seeing the manifestation of God. But he doesn't have any confidence in himself. Right. 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 He got into an arguing match with God. 
And God is pretty much twisting his arm just to participate in the plan of God. God is twisting his arm just to get him involved and to fulfill his calling. Moses knew, as the scripture said, 40 years prior to, he knew he was the man called for the job. Let me tell you something. There are a lot of people in this place that know they have a calling on their life. They know God has called them, but somehow things has called, caused them to die out their calling. Yes, Don't act like I'm not talking about you. Yes, Moses now, he, he's at the bush and he's struggling and then he's even asking for God to send somebody else and Mo God just got sick and tired of, okay, Moses, I'll just get your brother to be your spoke. I just need somebody. I hope and pray that I don't get in that particular place where God just has to send somebody in my stead. Amen. If you don't want to do the, God, the job that you, you're called for, God will raise somebody else to take your place. Amen. Don't think you're indispensable. And so now here we have Moses. He delivers the people. God uses Moses, and now they are in a very difficult situation. God had given Moses instructions. God had given Moses the plan, or at least not the full plan, but gave Moses a direction. And now God did not tell Moses that the, now he, he told him the Pharaoh was going to harden his heart. Now they get out here, now God is telling them, I, I don't want you to go this route. I want you to go around the other way by the Red Sea. And it didn't make a whole lot of sense. Can I talk to somebody right here? God will take you in a place that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. It made a whole lot more sense to go this way. And God says, no, I don't want you to go. I want you to back up, turn around, and I want you to go here. Now, God places them in a, and he places all kinds of difficult situations around them, and they look, it looked like they were fenced in. Right. Has anyone ever been in a particular place like that where you feel fenced in? God told you to go here, go there, and next thing you know, you're trapped. It looks like you have no way, way out. It's no, it's, it, how in the world can you go forward? Right. And the Red Sea is in front of you, right. and now God has given you instructions and the instructions to the people of God. Brother Darrell Bond, the instructions are go forward. Now, when you were in the type of Egypt, not that this was Egypt, <laughs> you just knew you were going to take that rod and throw it down and it turned into a, a snake and all the enemy, uh, the enemy would flee. You knew that when you got out there, everybody would just flock and listen to you as you gave command. I'm sure you found out real soon. <laughs> Bishop said, hey, has he found out yet? <laughs> I say, yes, I think he's found that out. <laughs> Every young man, oh, yeah, we're going to blow and go. We're going to do it. We're going to bust this city wide open. Amen. I mean, we're going to have people flocking like, uh, uh, you know, like uh, flies on uh, manure, you know, just woo all over the place. Uh, hey, it's going to happen like white on rice. Uh, hey, I'm telling you what, it's going to happen. <laughs> yes. But can I tell you, the word of God is sure. The word of God is true. If God said, I want you to go to Hamilton and I want to use you to build my church, let me tell you, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If God said, I want to use you to minister to the people in Baltimore City and I'm going to use you to set up a citadel and I'm going to use you to advance the kingdom of God, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how great the Red 
see is it doesn't matter if the enemy is climbing down your back. God has given us everything we need to have revival and harvest in this last day. It doesn't matter what society says. It doesn't matter how many things come against the purpose of God and the will of God and the word of God. Let me tell you something. The enemy can't stop the church. Society can't stop the church. Wickedness can't stop the church. Darkness can't stop the church. The only thing that can stop the church is the church stopping. I said the only thing that can stop the church is the church stopping. But God says, hey, don't stop and stand still. He said, keep moving. I know the Bible records Moses saying, stand still and see the salvation of God. Everything in the Bible is just telling you what's being said and what's being done. And, and you got to understand that the scripture also says that, uh, uh, um, what's his name, Jude? Judas went out and hung himself. Are you going to do likewise? I know that's what Moses said. Paul says something similar. He said when the, he was in the ship, he said, oh, I perceive that there's going to be much harm and, and loss of lives. And he said loss, and he was talking about lives. Hey, hey people are going to die up in here. That's what Paul said, I perceive. Your perception is all right until God says otherwise. Moses, you perceive that the people are supposed to, stood, supposed to have stood still. And that sounds spiritual. Stand still and see the salvation of God. Let me tell you something. Those people could have stand still, and, and guess what? They wouldn't have seen salvation. Let me tell you something. When that water went up as a wall, let me tell you, nobody was standing around talking about Moses said, stand still, y'all. <laughs> So stand still was the old word. But the fresh word is move forward. Go forward. The word Friday night was to go forward. Antioch, the north, I'm going to say Antioch. We are Antioch in case you didn't know it. And Antioch, the word is to go forward. Amen. There's a city to be won. There are souls to be saved. There are people that need to be delivered. There are people that are in bondage that God is designed to set free. We've been called to the kingdom for such a time as this. We have the core to cover it from Washington, D.C. All the way from Washington, D.C. to, I want to say Harrisburg, but what, huh? York, PA. You know what that's telling me? God has given us territory from north to south, east to west. There are a few people in here from Owens Mills as far as west as Owens Mills and then all the way as far east as you can go and that's e uh, Essex. The other side of Essex is the water. We have someone, oh, uh, I was going to say uh, someone from uh, Rise and Sun, but, and that's kind of northeast. Jamil, is your mom here? I'm sorry? I'm from Virginia. You're from Virginia. Okay, Virginia. You can tell he's from Virginia, too. Got that accent. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My man from Virginia, you come up here to worship with us. Welcome. Thank you for coming. We're glad to have you. I don't know if it's your first time, but God bless you. Let me tell you something. We're not here just wasting our time being pew sitters. <laughs> God has a kingdom. He has a plan, and God has a purpose. You're not just sitting here coming just to listen to a man preach. Amen. You're here to get instruction. Amen. To get stirred up. Amen. So we can go out and do what God has called us to do. Somebody look at somebody and tell them, move forward. So here we are. 
God given instruction. Moses had the word of God. And then what happens? He just stopped. I think we better stay right here, folks. The enemy is climbing on his case. We better stand right here. Could it be that some of us have, have the instructions that God desires for us to have, but we're waiting for detail? Some of us are waiting for our ministry to blossom. Uh, I had times when a spirit of prophecy come on me. And you know how if that spirit has ever come on you, you feel it. And you do everything and say, no. Ah, no. <laughs> Leave me alone. And that thing comes where well, you just can't hold back. And it's like that. God says to move forward. You see, the thing is this. Going forward requires for us to do two things. Now, I'm not getting into, uh, I was going to say the bishops. Uh, Pastor Reber's message, I'm not going to touch that. But God has given us instructions. And let me tell you, a lot of times we often want uh, God to move. And we won't move until we see or hear. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes we won't move until we see or hear. Oftentimes, we won't move until we feel. But often, it works this way. God purposes that we won't see, hear, or even feel until we move. I'm going to say it again. We often wait to move and won't move until I hear, I see, or I feel. And then God purposes not to get you to see anything, to feel anything, or to hear anything until you move. Oh, I'm standing still waiting to see the salvation of God. And God is saying, no, if you want to see the salvation of God, you better get to moving. Oh, right. no, I know it's going to be quiet right there. Because we get scared. Yeah. Yeah. I said we get scared. Yeah. See, faith says move. Fear says, no, I'm not going to move until I get more direction. <laughs> and we call it faith. Oh yeah, I'm waiting on the I'm waiting on the Lord. Oh, I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting for I, I'm I'm waiting for a word from God. I have news for you. You already got the word. The word was to move. <laughs> well, where do I move? Let me get someone. Let me. Who am I going to pick with today? You said pick with you? Okay, come on. You raise your hand. Come on. You going to come? Let's give a hand to Skyler. So, Skyler, I, I, I would like for you to move. Now, you see, that was just that simple. Skyler didn't even, he, she didn't even ask which, which way I'm going to go. I want you to keep moving, Skyler. You see where Skylar's going? Just, she doesn't even realize she's moving forward and she's moving in my direction. Keep moving, Skylar. Just keep going. Just keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking, Skylar. Keep walking, Skylar. Keep walking, Skylar. Go ahead and walk, Skylar. Keep moving, Skylar. Keep moving, Skylar. Keep walking, Skylar. 
Walk, 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 Skyler. Keep walking. Keep walking, Skyler. Keep walking, Skyler. Keep walking, Skyler. You see, when we get to moving, God gets to directing. Uh, and when we get to walking, God gets to ordering my steps uh, in his word. I said, you got to start moving for God to give you further direction. Somebody turn me up a little bit. Oh, I'm waiting on the Lord. Can I tell you, God is waiting on you. I don't have a word. I don't have any direction. You are given instruction. You won't get the direction until you obey the instruction. And the instruction is to move. I said it's your move. Faith says to move. Abraham, yes, Lord, get thee out from thy father's house and from thy kindred and go into a land that I will show thee. Put that, uh, uh, put Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. I want you to get out from your country. I want you to get out from your country. I want you to get out from your kindred. And I want you to get out, amen, uh, and, and from your father's house uh, and unto a land that I'm showing you. To the land that I've showed you. No, I'm not showing you the land yet. Keep it right there. I'm not showing you the land. To a land, I didn't show it to you, and I'm not showing it to you. Like I said, we won't move until we see. We won't move until we hear. And God gave him instruction. I'm not going to show you. You're not going to see it. You're not going to feel it. You're not going to walk in it until you move. And once you move, I'm going to, now, come on. God didn't even tell him to land. He just said, I want you to go. Get out. Don't worry about where you're going. Just worry about where you're coming from. Get up from where you are. And Abraham, Abram, the verse number two, please. He said, I'm going to do this once you obey me. And I will make of thee a great nation. And can I tell you, it wasn't going to be just when he started moving. And I will bless thee. And I will make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Can I tell you, when you get blessed, God wants you to be a blessing. You can tell blessed people because they bless others. Next verse. And I will make and I will bless them to bless thee and curse them to curse of thee. And in thee shall all the family. Great, powerful, powerful word, powerful promise. Verse number four tells us. So Abraham did what? He departed. <laughs> hey, I, I don't know where I'm going. I can't see the land. Just start moving. Could it be that God, as Abraham moved, God was saying, that's it. Keep on moving. But I don't know where I'm going. I know where you're going. Because I'm leaving. See, the scripture says, the Lord orders our steps. Order my step. And how can he order a step until you take it? God can't order your step by staying still. See, order our step, we think that means, okay, put your foot, uh, turn uh, six, uh, 60 degrees left. I want you to be uh, uh, 33 degrees longitude, 50 long latitude. No, no, God doesn't do, we want it all, and, and, and we think that God is in ge uh, geometry, and what's that, uh, oh man, drafting. Because in drafting, you have to have it precise. I couldn't stand that. I mean, precise. Can't cut corners. And so we want all the answers. Hello? Oh, I know who I'm talking to. And you, you know what? I wonder what it's, what it's going to look like. <laughs> How many of you here said this? I, 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 I don't know what it's going to look like. Good. 
You don't need to know what it's going to look like. I, I just, I just want to know how, no. Sometimes when I get a word from God, God just give me one word and one sentence. And I act on that, and next thing you know, God begin to open up and he begin to reveal. Let me tell you, God is not going to reveal until you start. I'm waiting on a word. No, 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 no. A thousand times no. You're not waiting on the word. What you're waiting on is you're waiting for uh, confirmation, reaffirmation. Yeah. Uh, you, you're waiting for everything. I'm going to tell you what. When I, when I knew I had a call on my life to preach, hey, man, my wife, she got sick of me by then. She was tired. She was like, I'm just sick of it. You're waiting for a confirmation to the confirmation to the confirmation. How many confirmations you're going to need? Oh, I know I'm talking to someone. Well, I feel like God want to use me in this area and this area. And that, you know, but I, I, I'm waiting for God. 30 years later, I'm waiting on the Lord. Amen. Cain and all. Oh, I'm still waiting for God. Amen. Taking your last breath. God. God, what happened? You told me X, Y, and Z. You didn't come through, God. And God said, what are you talking about? I told you to take the step, and you hadn't moved. You're waiting for another word. You hadn't obeyed the first one. How are you going to get a second word, and you hadn't got, did anything with the first one? So Exodus chapter 14, oh man, uh, Pastor Reba broke that thing down right here. Exodus 14, 20, and again, I'm not trying to, I, I had this message for, for a, several, a couple of weeks, and I was like, I was so mad at him, I'm going to tell him to, I hadn't talked to him yet, I was rode in the car, I didn't want to tell him, I rode, with him, rode in the car with him on Friday, I wanted to tell him, man, and, uh, and Saturday, I wanted to tell him, man, you messed up my word. As a matter of fact, I told my wife, I, I'm not preaching this. Verse number 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. Look at that. I said Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. Like I said, I don't want to get into the intricate details because I don't want to re-preach anything. But that, see, that, that was the whole thing right there. And that, that's what the Lord had. My, you, if you look at my notes, I have that bolded, or the scripture. I don't have a bunch of notes. I have scripture. That, that, that scripture, that part, stretched, st when Moses stretched out his hand. You see, when God tells us to move, the first thing we need to do is to stretch out towards the direction of God. Moses stretched forth his hand. What well, you say he stretched forth his hand in the direction of God. Uh, uh, he stretched forth his hand in direction of the uh, Red Sea. Who was in front of him? The angel of God, the presence of God, the Shekinah glory, the cloud, the glory cloud was in front of him. And he stretched his hands forward, amen, towards the cloud because that's where the cloud was leading him at the Red Sea. When he stretched forth his hand towards the cloud, God began to move. Now, we know what happened. The, the, the cloud wound up coming on the other side of the children of Israel and stood between them and the enemy. Amen. If you want God between you, you and the enemy, you better stretch forth your hand. In the direction that God wanted him to go. See, there's something that must happen. God wants to give us revival, Sister Yabor. And for a lot of times, for many of us, we, we're just sitting around waiting. Can I ask you a question? How many believe, in, believe we're going to have end time revival and harvest? Oh, my goodness. No wonder. Those of you who believe, believe that just clap, stand. Everybody who just clap. Don't stand up if you didn't just clap. Uh, all 
right, those of you who clapped and raised their hand, God knows if you didn't do anything. Uh-huh. So, you know, that's what I'm doing. Stay, stay, stand up. Those of you who, who, who hadn't stood up and you, you condemned that, no, let me stop. <laughs> so y'all don't believe that in revival and harvest? Y'all don't believe in God? This, and then why you didn't say anything? Why you didn't agree to it? Huh? Since when are you supposed to stop saying amen to the preaching? Okay, so how many said amen to it then? That stand up then if you're sitting down and said amen. <laughs> who, who said amen in their spirit and their heart? But they, <laughs> <laughs> Let the meditation in my heart. <laughs> you was thinking it, but you just couldn't get it out fast enough. <laughs> Go ahead and sit down. <laughs> Stretch forth your hand. If you want something to happen, I preached this message before. It's time to stretch out. You, get this. He, he told this man who, who had a withered hand in Mark chapter 3, verse number 5, when you have faith, you move. And, and when he had looked, and talking about this man with a withered hand, please, Mark 3 and 5, and when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, because his disciples, they, didn't, they couldn't believe. He said unto the man, listen to that, stretch forth thy hand. He had a withered hand. He couldn't even use it. Stretch forth thy hand. And guess what happened? He stretched it out and his hand was restored whole as the other some of you are looking for restoration some of you are looking for renewal but let me tell you you're not going to get it some of you are making all types of excuses he's not asking you to stretch forth your good hand he's trying to tell you to stretch forth that which is lame that which is lacking that which is limp let me tell you God is saying you don't even have to give me your best give me that thing that's withered and that's sick just use that will use your weakness and I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. <clears throat> Somebody need to determine, you know what? I'm weak. I'm worn. I can't do much moving. But let me tell you what I'm going to do is I'm with everything within me. I don't care if all you can do is do this. Move. You see this arm right here? I have what they call a frozen shoulder. It's, uh, 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 what is it called? Um, adhesive capsuli capsulitis. And so this, uh, this capsule is just stuck. It's like glue. And so when I get up in the morning, I literally have to just start moving and prying it. And then I had to take this thing to, to get on it because it won't move and it gets stiff and at night it's all. And, 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 but you know what? I take this, this, this arm and that's what, what a physical therapy is all about and, or physical abuse. <laughs> it's all about stretching as far as you can, even though it may hurt. <laughs> you got a withered hand. Let me tell you something. You hadn't used it in a long, a long while because you want to be inconspicuous. You want everybody to, 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 to take a look at that. You know, when somebody has something, and I've seen people who had uh, deformities and all that, they try to keep that thing here. They didn't want everyone to see, so they don't want to, they don't want to bring any attention to that with a thing. And Jesus said, I want you to show it. <laughs> And I want you, I want, I want to see your weakness. And I want you to take that and stretch it. Bring it to me. Let me tell you something. I know you can do it in your strength, but what I want to know is if you're going to trust me to do it through your weakness. Give me your bad stuff. Give me your weak stuff. Stretch it out. Come on, somebody stretch. Don't stretch with your strength. Stretch with your weakness. The 
Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 54, verse number 2, God is purpose to do something in and through his people. And notice again, enlarge the place of your tent. If you really believe God is going to do it, it's time for us to enlarge. I'm not talking about going to McDonald's after service. You, <laughs> you get large, all right. Hey, give, give me a super size. When we go to McDonald's, we know all about super size. And when God's trying to tell us to do something in God we, and, and, and to stretch out and enlarge, amen, we want to get a, a happy meal. We want to go to the dollar menu. I hate seeing an adult get a kid's menu. Because it's cheap. <laughs> you know, y'all know it's the cheapest thing on the menu. Can I get a happy meal? And you got those tenant windows. He's like, quiet down back there. <laughs> Nobody in there but you. <laughs> Acting like you got some kids back there. But you don't have any kids. I'm going to take this back to my child, my grandchild at home. You don't want them to know you ordered a Happy Meal. <laughs> Somebody know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you feel embarrassed. You don't want to act like it's for you. So if you're a man, you say, they say, is it for a girl or a boy? You say, it's for a girl. <laughs> you don't want them to know that little boy toy is for you. <laughs> Amen. Enlarge. Is it has anybody done you how many believe in for revival and harvest? Yeah. How many believe we're gonna double? How many believe we're gonna have more daughter works? How many believe we're gonna double our care groups, small groups, Bible studies? Okay, start enlarging. What are you doing to prepare for it? What are you doing to prepare for it? Are we going to have revival? Yes! I want all those who are willing to try to reach a few people to come up here and get a... Uh, 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 some some um, seed cards. And you might get your boy and a little kid to come up here. <laughs> and Tiffany. <laughs> I want to know how many of you carrying these things around in your pocket. And you know how it is. I know everybody in here, you've ran across people, and you know what you've said? Oh, I wish I would have had some cards on me. You come on, yeah. How many times that has happened to you? Yeah, hello? Hello? You know what happened? You didn't enlarge the place of your tent. You don't wait till you get out there with the into the community and then all of a sudden whatever. You never know when God says move right now. You, oh, hallelujah. You see, this is what happens. Come on, stand up, launch. God has been, God says to move, move, move. And you get out there in the community and guess what happens? You know what? Uh, well, we talked, we gave you instruction, tell you to get some seed cards and everything else. And, 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 but you didn't do what you supposed to have done. And next thing you know, somebody comes up that really needs God. They need God bad. They need God real bad. I mean, they need prayer. Oh, I mean, they need deep intercession. Hallelujah. Amen. They deal with all sorts of stuff. They got a crazy husband and everything else. Amen. 
And here you are. You recognize she's feeling down and low. Amen. God is signaling to you to go reach her. Amen. Not to get fresh with her. <laughs> not to give her, not to get her number. <laughs> no, of course not. No, right, right. right he, he, you know, he's, he's, he's wants you to, to reach her. Amen. No. Not to touch her. No, sir. No, sir. Amen. And and so you go to look in your and, and next thing you know, you feel a prompting. You know, I need I need something to stretch forth and, and I, I I don't know what I'm gonna do. I need to stretch forth and right. but guess what? I hadn't done anything and now God is trying to order your steps. Guess what? Now you don't have anything that God wanted you to put in your hand, and now it's time to go reach that person. And guess what? God can't order your steps and give you the direction. Amen. Because you didn't obey the first step. And when the pastor said, you know what you need to do? Amen. You need to get some of these flyers. But you know what you said? Oh, I don't need the flyer. I don't need the seed cards. I can reach people and I can talk to people. But why is it? Why is it when you got, hear me now, hear me now. Hold up. No, no, no. Everybody go at once. Uh, he's okay. Hear me now. What happened was as soon as you got out there to that store and you were looking for a connection connection point uh, you were looking for a connection point and, and all of a sudden it's this this voice says get a give her a card that voice said, get her a card and you say oh, oh do I have a card oh, God, I don't even have a card and then you go running out to get to the car to see if I do I have a card. I'm going to get that person a card. I'm going to invite that person to church. And you don't have a card to invite that person to church. And then you're like, oh, man, I messed up. Guess what? You missed it. You know why? Because you didn't prepare. You didn't enlarge your tent. Don't tell me you're expecting God to move until you move first. Enlarging your tent means get and ready, get in preparation. Are you preparing? Are you? Do you really believe God is going to move and use you? Or do you really want Bible study? Do you really want to invite people to church? What are you doing to prepare for it? I'm just waiting on the Lord. God is going to give me the word. He said that in that, that, that moment, I'll give you what to say. And that was talking about something completely different. And that was talking about when you're being brought up to the council and everything else. And he said, I'm going to give you what to say in that hour. But we want to apply to everything. Sometimes you just get all choked up. Amen. Even those who had the gift of the gab. I mean, this woman can talk. Especially at the service when I'm trying to go home. That gift comes on her. And I'm telling you, she can talk the Pope out of Catholicism. <laughs> she can talk Muhammad out of Islam. And he not even alive. That's why I married her. <laughs> because I'm fully persuaded. <laughs> but there are some times, when even if you have the gift of the gap, hello, you need that connection point. And so just kind of prepare. You know, some things you can do, you might think this corny, is you try to prepare uh, 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 yourself by uh, uh, kind of thinking of certain things, uh, lines or whatever. You know, you guys, you know how you, you had your pickup lines that never worked? <laughs> <laughs> You know, you got to have your lines. Amen. I'm serious. Now, it's okay to have pickup lines as long as you're trying to pick them, winning to save them to Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. And so what's wrong with being prepared? See, enlarging your tent, that was a sign of preparation because God was saying, do you believe in what I'm about to do in verse number three? If you believe in what I'm going to do in verse number three... You need to obey. Now, you go back there. to Yeah, we're going to do that later. Thank you very much. 
Now, if you believe in what I'm about to do in verse number three, I'm going to give you instructions in verse number two. First of all, enlarge the place of your tent. Where you dwelling? Won't you broaden it? Okay. Stop staying where you are. And then he said, and let them stretch. I want you to stretch forth. Stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. I want you to stretch this thing out as far as you can stretch it. And if you know anything about make, uh, have, setting up a tent, you, you know, you, got, you have to take that tent and the, uh, the ropes on that tent. You have to stretch that thing way out as far as you can get it. And he said, and then spare not. Lengthen thy cords as far as you can get them. And strengthen thy stakes. Next verse. Then. We want the breakout. I said we want the breakout. But we never do what we need to do in order to see the breakout. We don't see what we need to see. We, we, we don't do what we need to do to see. We, we talked about, we always talking about, you know, the breakthrough. 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 And that's all I know. Breakthrough. Well, they're saying breakthrough. And breakthrough in my job. Breakthrough in my house. Breakthrough. Breakthrough everywhere I go. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Break. Break. Breakthrough. All that. And guess what? If you don't enlarge, that won't be a breakthrough. If you don't stretch forth, that won't be a breakthrough. Amen. If you don't extend, that won't be a breakthrough. We're waiting for God to do his part when we hadn't done ours. It's commendable to wait on the Lord. But do you know that, that that is in the Bible, this wait on, they that wait on the Lord? Do you know what that actually means? Where, where, where's where's uh, Eliana? I know, Adelina. Come here, Adelina. Sure. Okay. <laughs> now, Adelina, every service, at least three or four times, Adelina normally wait on me. Now, Adelina, when you normally come to me, what you normally do? She wraps herself around me. Do you know that's what the wait on the Lord means? To stretch. Thank you, baby. You did a great job. <laughs> the word waiter, it means to get entwined, to wrap yourself around. In other words, the waiting on the Lord doesn't mean to keep still at all. The waiting on the Lord is, uh, I'm going to get all of him. It's to stretch. Uh, it's to enlarge. Uh, it's to lengthen. Uh, it's to strengthen. Uh, amen. I'm telling you, somebody's waiting for God to do something in their ministry and in their life. Uh, and guess what? Nothing is happening because you hadn't obeyed God. God said, I want you to move. I want you to stretch. Uh, I want you to enlarge yourself. Yes, you. He's wondering, is this my cue? You don't have to get them glasses checked, man. <laughs> Next thing that we're going to start, I'm going to have to bring Sister Sharon to start signing. <laughs> Zachary, come to the platform. <laughs> I can mess with him like that. The breakthrough doesn't come until you move. And sometimes the direction God will have you move in doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Moses, get your rod. You know that thing I gave you? Or at least I, I, it was Moses' rod. Sometimes it's called the, the rod of Moses, and other times it's called the rod of the Lord. I don't know if you checked that out. And, 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 but and guess what? Aaron had his own rod, too. And some of the stuff was done with Aaron's own rod. I ain't going to get into all that, but that's another theological thing for another day. But Moses, stretch forth, take your rod. Amen. Take that thing. Uh, 
that I said I was going to use, and I want you to stretch it out. Now, come on. That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. You know what? I'm going to tell you right now, God is going to, when God moves and does what he needs to do, God is going to have you to do something so foolish. To, it's going to seem so foolish to everyone else. And you're going to have to decide whether you're going to be a David who decides, I'm, not, I'm going to put down a sword and I'm going to pick up five stones. Or you can be a Saul, always worrying about what somebody else thought. The reason why Saul failed, because he was always worrying about what people thought. Every time he disobeyed God, he was worrying about what somebody thought. How he was going to look. Samuel didn't come in time, at least at the, the set time. See, Samuel set a time. And said, I'm going to come on thus and thus date at such and such time. And guess what happened? Samuel didn't show up. And you say, see, God, God failed. He didn't show up. God, some, some people say, I had a word, and it didn't happen at that time. God just told you to do something at a certain time, and guess what happens? God just tested you. Oh, hallelujah. And guess what happened? And, and, and Samuel said, hey, when I come back, I'm going to do my job. You just do yours. And Saul said, I can't believe God. I'm going to do somebody else's job. You, you, you see, that's a problem. Can I, I, it's still early. Sometimes when it, when, it, when, when it doesn't seem like what we feel is our ministry is being fulfilled, we go looking for somebody else's job. God. Moses, hey, nothing's been happening with my rod over the last little while. Thank God he didn't go look for somebody else's rod. Stretch it forth. God's going to have you tell you to do something that seems so far out. But you better obey God. Well, what, 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 what will people think? Does it really matter? You see, because when people start seeing the sea split and you walking on dry land and the enemy drowning... And on this side of the sea, before God gave the instructions, you know, you're going to walk on dry ground. They didn't have any, they didn't have a clue what was going to happen. Not a clue. The only thing they knew was this. They knew where the promised land was going to be. And they knew that they supposed to have gone forward. That was it. Won't you stand, please? Moses, you've been given a word. God says, why criest thou unto me? I've told you what you needed to do. I've given you the instructions. I'm giving you, I've given you all the instructions that you, you need. Can I tell you, men of God, women of God, people of God, all of you who are called in God's kingdom, you are, some of you are waiting for further instruction. You are waiting for clarification. You are waiting for affirmation and confirmation. And God is saying, tonight, it's your move. It's your move. Enlarge, stretch forth, and you will break out. If you know you have a calling on your life in this day, if you know that God is calling you and God has a, a plan to use you in different areas and dimensions uh, in, uh, in this last day. You've been called to the kingdom for such a time as this. But yet you've been waiting. You've been waiting.
waiting for God to do, make the next move. I'm going to call you down to this altar. I'm going to call you down to this altar. And I know it's more people than just, just who's starting to make a move. And I'm going to tell you this. Your next step, God is not going to give you. He already gave it to you. He said, move forward. God will order your steps. The word order means to, to uh, actually to establish. He will establish and make your step firm if you move. As a matter of fact, if you feel led to come down here, if you don't feel that, that this, what I just said, apply, but you want to come and you just want to be sure, I'm asking you to come now. Amen. If God has given you direction, God has given you purpose. I want you to come on down. Come on. Let's fill this altar. Now, there's not a, a lot of hype, and I'm glad it's not. Let me tell you something. There are some, pow there are some powerful people in this house. you to do this I, I just want you to do you can you can block me out you can listen just begin to lift up your hand and begin to feel all that after the Lord and I want you to just begin to communicate to him in the spirit begin to open up your spirit to him now you've been called to the kingdom for such a time as this and it doesn't matter where you have been heretofore. That's not even the issue. Sometimes we feel like a failure. I can imagine Moses after 80 years and 40 years in Egypt, 40 years in the backside of a desert, he felt like a failure. He just wanted to give up and God says, no, I'm just beginning. Amen. What I purposed in you, hey, I'm still going to do it. Father, I don't need any detailed instruction. God, by faith, I'm just going to begin to move. Well, I don't know which way to move. Could you just start moving? Trust that God will turn you where he needs to turn you. Trust that God will direct you where he needs to direct you. Trust that God will, will give you the orders that he needs to give you. Come on, that's it right there. Come on, somebody talk to him right now. But God, I'm afraid. I, I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to fail. You can't fail when you begin to move. What if I move in the wrong direction? God will direct your path. He will order your steps. Come on, hallelujah. The same God that gave you the initial word will be the God that give you the direction that you need. Come on, I'm going to tell somebody tonight, it's your move. It's your move. It's your move. It's your move. Stop crying. Stop crying, Moses, and move forward. Stretch out your hand. Do something. Just don't sit still. Come on, that's it. Shando roto lo 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 boho santa bahaya. Come on, God has called you. I said, God has called you. Come on, God is designed to do something through you and in you. You got to go forward. You got to lift up your hands and your head and stretch out. Come on, let God do what he said he would do. Come on, in Jesus' name.
Lord God won't give you the next step. I said the next one is yours. Amen. You're waiting for the next steps. And you won't get them until you take the one you need to take. Come on in Jesus' name. Touch my heart, Lord. Speak to me. He's not going to violate your will. Use anything, Lord. Jesus' name. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. That's it. Hallelujah. Take my hand. 